Hello and welcome to today's math lesson. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera. Hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hand on our laps and close our eyes. When you're ready guys, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. And next we can do our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And we can begin by stretching up high to the sky. High as we can. And then let's go down low, touch our toes. up high one more time and this time can we go tippy toe high and while we're there let's have a wave side to side and then back down to touch our toes once more Excellent guys, and then let's stand up and shake it out. Arms and legs, shake it out. And now we can do five stretches to our right. One, two, three, four, Five. Then we'll have five stretches to our left. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys. And let's have another shake. Arms and legs, shake it out. Now we can take our right hand and find our left foot. And then left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot, left hand, right foot. Excellent, guys. And then to finish, we'll shake our arms and legs again. And then five claps. 
One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Have a seat. So welcome to today's math lesson. And to begin, we're going to be having a recap of the previous math lesson. So who can remember what we learned how to draw in the previous lesson, guys? Bar charts. Bar charts. Well done. Well remembered. We learned how to read and then how to draw bar charts. So let's write that phrase on the board first. Bar is spelled B-A-R. And charts, C H A R. T S. And remember I said sometimes you'll hear the phrase bar graph. Don't be confused, they both mean the same thing. Some people call them bar charts and some people call them bar graphs. So they both mean the same thing. And what we're going to do now is we're going to have a classroom demonstration of how our students can build their own bar chart using the different factors that go into making each bar chart. So the first thing that we need for a bar chart, we need to know what it's about. So the first thing we must have is a title. And I'm going to ask Lakau to come forward and give our bar chart a title. So Lakau, there's your marker. Please come and join me at the front of class. So let's see, what does Lakau think our bar chart can be about? What should we have a bar chart about? Excellent. A great title, so we'll have a bar chart about favourite foods. So our title will go at the top here. Can you write it for me, Lakgaon? F A V O R I T E. Favourite. And then food. F O O D, S. And then what you can do, underline the title. Okay, so we've got the beginning of our bar chart now. Favourite foods. So already we know what our bar chart will be about. Lakau, that was brilliant. High five and a big round of applause for Lakau, please, guys. <laughs> and now we can begin, start to design our bar chart. And the first thing our bar chart needs is a line that goes from the bottom to the top. Can anybody remember what that was called? The vertical axes. Yes. And I would like Bankpon to come and show me how we can draw a vertical axis on our bar graph. So remember, your vertical axes will always be on the left-hand side. Excellent. You see, a vertical axis is basically a vertical line. But in graphs and charts, we call it an axis. Can you make it a little bit taller for me, please, Bangkok? Excellent. That'll do. That's brilliant. So there's our vertical axis. Bangkok, very well done. Big round of applause for Pangpon too, guys. So what we have now is a vertical axis. And then remember, the next thing we need to do is give our vertical axis a label and then a scale. So I would like Prow to demonstrate our vertical axis label, please. So come and join me at the front of class. And the vertical axis label is hard. We have to write sideways. So Prow, can you just squeeze? Excellent. And remember, the vertical axis is always about numbers. E R of O F P E O P L E. Proud, that's brilliant. <laughs> Just enough space on top. So we can see that our vertical axis label is number of people because we're going to be counting the number of people who have favourite foods. Well, that was brilliant. High five, big round of applause for Prel, please, guys. <laughs> so now our vertical axis has its label, but now it needs its scale. We need numbers, so we know the different numbers of people. So Nadia, can you come forward and show us how to do our vertical axis scale? 
And remember, at the bottom of our scale, what number will we always start with, guys? Zero. Always start at the bottom with zero. And then we can go up in stages one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Brilliant, Nadia. So you can see straight away we have a scale now for our vertical axes. The bottom, zero, and then all the way up to the top, ten. Nadia, that was brilliant. High five, big round of applause for Nadia too, guys. So that's our vertical axis taken care of with its label and its scale. Now we need the line going across the bottom of our chart, not the vertical axis, horizontal axis. And Chu is going to demonstrate how we can draw our horizontal axis. So come and join me at the front, please, Chu. And where the vertical axis is a vertical line, the horizontal axis will be a horizontal line going across. A line right across. Excellent, you Keep going. A bit more. A little bit more. That's great. Brilliant. So you can see the horizontal line stands for a horizontal axis. Chu, brilliantly demonstrated. Big round of applause for Chu, please, guys. So now we need a label for our horizontal axes. And remember, the vertical axis is always numbers. The horizontal axis is the categories. And today we're looking at favorite foods. So now we need the categories of some different foods. Let's see, who can give us some different categories for favorite foods? I know, Dan. Come and join me at the front, please, Dan. So let's see if we can have about four different categories. Who can, who can give down some examples? What can we? Fish. Fish. That's a good example. I-S-H. Chicken is another one. Well done. H-I-C-K-E-N. That's brilliant. We've got fish and chicken. Can we get another two? Pizza, so yeah, sometimes pizza. Mm. I, Z, Z, A. And finally, steak, steak too, yeah. S, T, E, E, A, K. Brilliant. Damn, that's excellent. So now our horizontal axis has its labels for the different selections of foods. We've got fish, fish chicken, chicken pizza, pizza, and steak. Pizza. Damn, that was brilliant. Big round of applause for down two, please, guys. So now we're ready to complete the information in our bar chart. But what we need are some numbers. So I would like to invite Pak Bung to come and join me at the front of class, please. Pak Bung can take the pen and come and join me at the front. So let's see guys, now we have to come up with some information for our bar chart. How many people shall we say have fish as, our, as their favorite food? Four, okay? So Pak Bung can find the number four and you can do the bar for fish. Brilliant, okay. So you can see straight away that the fish category goes up to four. But now, Pak Bung, I would like to see seven people have chicken as their favorite food. So all the way up to seven, across, and then down. Perfect. So we've got four for fish and seven for chicken. How many shall we have for pizza? <laughs> How about six for pizza? Okay, we'll have six for pizza. And then, five for steak. Okay, brilliant. Now look at how Pak Bung has arranged all of the different bars to show the different amounts of information. So how many people have fish as their favorite food? Four. Okay, 
So a little tip, when I do my bar chart, when I'm working out, I'll write the number inside the bar. How many have chicken as their favorite food? Seven. How many have pizza? Six. And finally, how many have steak? Five. So looking at our bar chart, guys, which is the most popular food? Chicken, because most people like chicken. Which is the least popular? Fish, because only four. And how many people in total have picked their favorite food? 22. Four plus seven equals 11. 11 plus six? 17 plus five? Equals 22. So you see now we've learned how to construct our bar chart correctly to get the different types of information. Pak Bung, that was brilliant. High five and a big round of applause for Pak Bung, guys. And a big round of applause for everyone. So that was a recap of the previous math lesson when our students learned how to design their own bar charts. We're going to move on slightly in today's lesson. We're staying with charts, but not bar charts anymore. Today, we're going to be looking at pie charts, which are another example of how to use a graphic statistic to show information. And what we've got now is a PowerPoint presentation for our students to observe, practice speaking, and also learn different facts about pie charts. So let's all turn to look at the TV screen, please, guys. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation, reading pie charts. Yes, and you can tell where they get their name from. Pie charts, what type of food do they look like? Pies, yes, so that's why we call them pie charts. Bar charts use bars for their bar charts. And the pie here looks like pie chart. And you can see the different sections or slices of the pie all represent different amounts. Pie charts are statistical graphics that use slices of a pie to represent data. Yes, and data is another word for numbers or figures. So like bar charts can represent data through bars, pie charts represent data through different size slices. Pie charts are so called because they look like a pie as we've already seen. The total of the pie chart is always 100%. Yes, whenever we have a complete circle or a complete pie, that's always 100%. So when it comes to doing the different slices of a pie, they must all add up to 100% at the end. Like here, we can see novelty items. How many percent? 19%. Clothing? 35%. Footwear? 30%. Accessories? Fragrances? Now, what do you think will happen if we add all of these percentages together? What will we get? 100%, yes. Because it's a complete pie, when we add everything together, everything adds to 100. And this pie chart is about the sales in a particular shop. So they have 35% sales of clothes. Footwear is 17%. Accessories, 24 Fragrances, 5%. And then novelty items. But all together, 100%. Therefore, the different slices of the pie chart must add up to 100%. Yes. The larger each slice of the pie, the greater the number it represents. Yes. Now this pie chart here 
isn't about favourite food, it's about favourite type of movie. What types of movies different people like to watch. So what do you think is the biggest slice of pie? What colour do you think is the biggest? Red, correct. Red amounts to how many percent? 30%, which is the romance section. So the most people like the romance movies. But which is the smallest slice of the pie? If red is the biggest, which one do we think is smallest? Blue. Blue. Yes. Blue is only 5%. And that's the drama type of movies. So you see, the larger the slice of pie, the more people have voted for it. The bigger the slice, the more people. Like the bar charts, the bigger the bar, the most people. In a pie chart, the bigger the slice. That's the main difference. A different colour is used to complete each slice of the pie chart. Now, very important. We like to do it for bar charts too, but for pie charts, we have to do it. What would happen if both of these sections were red? It would look like one big section. That's why for pie charts, it's important each different slice has to be a different colour so that they look different. If they're the same colour, it will just look like one big pie. So when doing your pie charts, have each category and slice a different colour. A colour key can be used to show what slices the different colours represent. Now, for example, this pie chart is about what is your favourite animal. So by using the colour key at the bottom, who can tell me what is the blue animal? Tigers, you see? We can just tell by the colour and the key. How about the red animal? Lions. Yellow. Zebras, green, giraffes, purple, elephants. So this is what we mean by a colour key. We just have the colours and the different categories at the bottom. And by looking at them, we can see which is which. Now, here we have an example of a pie chart. What's the title of our pie chart, guys? Same as the bar chart, the title comes at the top. What's our title here? Pet ownership. Yes. So what we're looking at now are the different pets that people own. And once again, we have a colour key. What does the blue colour stand for? Red, green, purple, and sky blue. Rodents. Rodents means mice, rats. Gerbils, hamsters. So who can tell me, now look carefully, what percentage of people own cats? Excellent. You see, what you've done, you've read it correctly. You've gone to the colour key, seen the colour for cats, gone to the pie chart and seen the percentage. How about dogs? Yes. And rabbits? 5%. And what will happen if we add all of these percentages together? What will we get? 100%. And that's how we correctly read pie charts. Any questions, guys? That was brilliant. Well done. <laughs> Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation so that they can begin to develop an understanding of pie charts and how to extract the different pieces of information to answer the different questions. And now it's time for our flash, our stretch exercise. So everybody please stand up and push in their chairs. And for this stretch exercise, we'll begin with some rotations. Left, right, left, right, left. Right, left, 
life. Excellent, guys. Next we can do some stretches. Let's do five stretches to our right. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And then five stretches to our left. One. Two, three, four, five. Now let's have a shake. Arms and legs, shake it off. Shake it off. And then hands on hips. Now go wiggle side to side. Stop. Another wiggle side to side. Stop. Forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and stop. Now we can go rounds and rounds. Rounds and rounds. And stop. And now back the other way. Rounds and rounds the other way. And stop. And to finish, we will do five claps. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So what I'm going to do now is a board demonstration of how to construct a pie chart so our students can practice reading it. So the first thing, same as with a bar chart, the first thing we need to give our pie chart is a title. And the title of my chart is going to be Favourite Sport. So the title out of always will go at the top. F-A-V-O-R-I-T-E and sports, S-P-O-R-T-S. So all together, guys, we can say favourite sports. Yes. Now, this is where a pie chart becomes different from a bar chart. Because a pie chart does not have a vertical axis or a horizontal axis. What shape is a pie chart? Circle or sphere. We have to draw a circle. Something like this. Okay? So now that we're starting with our circle, it doesn't have any slices yet. How much does the complete circle represent? What percentage? Complete circle will always be 100%. Okay? So remember, we're always dealing with 100 or 100%. So what we need now, if we're going to have favourite sports, we need to have some different sports. And it's based on 100%. So who can give me the name of some different sports, guys? Football. Football. A very popular sport. So we can have football here. F O. O T B A L L. Now let's see, we need about four different sports. Volleyball. Okay. V O L L E Y B A L L. So football, volleyball, and two more sports, please. Basketball. Okay. B A S. K-E-T-B-A-L-L. -L. And then one more. Tennis. We need at least four sports to make our pie chart look real. So we've got football, volleyball, basketball, and tennis. So what we'll do, to make it realistic, our 100%, we will say as though we ask 100 people. Because 100 people can represent the 100% of people we ask about favourite sports. So let's see. If we ask 100 people what their favourite sport is, how many do we think might say football? 45. About 45%. Okay, we'll go with 45. Now, thinking about a pie chart is 100%. 
Will 45 be more than half or less than half? Less than half. Half would be 50%. So if we're talking about 45, what we do, take the center of our pie chart, draw a straight line up to the top, but we want it to be slightly less than half. So here represents 45% Football. So you can see now how football represents 45% of the pie. And now we can move on to the next sport. So how about volleyball? How many people? 30. So less than football, but still quite a lot. So 30. So what we do now is we've got to 45% here. We need to go from 45% to 30%, which I think will be around... Yeah, like this. So, 30%. Volleyball. So what's 45 and 30 put together, added together? 75. So, so far, we've got football, 45%. Volleyball, 30%. So that's already 75%. So that means we've only got 25% left because everything needs to come to 100. So how about basketball? How many people would say basketball? 22. Okay, so that's nearly complete. 22. Now let's see, if it's 22, we'll go from 75 to here. I think like that. So basketball, 22%. Okay, so now let's think about our maths because we have one other slice of pie. How many people, if football is 45%, volleyball 30 basketball 22%, how many percent already? 3% for tennis, because 97% is already accounted for. So here we know the final amount, we can pull it outside, tennis, 3%. And you can see how my pie chart represents the graphics of how many people like their different sports. Ideally, when you come to do yours, use different colours for each of the sections. But because I'm doing a board demonstration, I only have the one colour to work with. So we can say football, 45%. Volleyball, 30%. Basketball, 22%. Tennis, 3%. Altogether, 100%. And that's how we create and read our own pie chart, guys. Very well done, well followed. <laughs> and now it's time for our worksheet part of the lesson. So teachers, make sure every student in your classroom gets their own worksheet. Because what we want them to do now is demonstrate their understanding of pie charts or pie graph and how to read it correctly to answer each of the questions. What this pie chart is about is about summer activities and each of the different students have answered what their favourite summer activity is. So by reading the questions and then looking at the statistics, our students can answer each one. So what's the first thing to do guys? Names on top first and give our students around 12 minutes and just help them with anything they need. So Ned, this one's for you. You're welcome. Pat for you. You're welcome. Nadia for you. You're welcome. Chu for you. You're welcome. Down, here's yours. You're welcome. Plow for you. You're welcome. Blackout for you. And bang pong. You're welcome, guys. So names on top first, and then have a read of the questions. And by reading the questions and looking at the pie graph or pie chart, you'll be able to answer. For example, question number one, Activity is least popular. So least popular, we're looking for the smallest slice. 
the smallest percent. Playing beach ball, yes. So 15%, that's the least. So remember, least is smallest, most is biggest. The most popular would be the biggest slice. The least popular, the smallest slice. So which activity is the least popular? Which is the smallest slice? Yes, see, playing beach ball is only 15%. Percentage of students like surfing. So let's find a surfing slice. How many percent? 30%. 30 percent, correct. So you see, now you can answer the questions with the different pieces of information. Surfing, 30 percent. So twice as many people like surfing as like playing beach ball. And then which two activities are equally popular? Number three. So equally popular means the same. The students must like two different activities the same. Collecting seashells. Collecting seashells, 17%. And kite flying. 17%. Well done. So collecting seashells and kite flying, the students like the same. They both choose 17%. And you can see that if you add all of the percentages together, you'll get to 100. Excellent, Hugh, yeah. You see, the least popular playing beach ball. Well done. So number three, which two activities are equally popular? So equally popular means the same. Can you see what percentages are the same? 17 and... 17. So collecting seashells and kite flying equally popular. Which activity is the favourite of 21% of students? Sand castles Building. Yes. You can see here the picture, sandcastles. So what percentage of students like an activity other than sandcastle building? Okay. So question number five means take the full pie, 100%, and then minus sandcastle building. So 100%. Minus 21%. And then you get the remainder of the students. So like now, 100 minus 21. And then you get your answer for the rest of the students. Yep. So what percentage of students like an activity other than sandcastle building? So how many for sandcastle building? 21%. 21%. So what you need to do, take the full pie, 100%, and then minus 21%. How many percent are you left with? 79%, perfect. Excellent, Kel. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the worksheet activity where they had to answer each of the questions by reading them and looking at the information given in the pie chart. My students here all did a brilliant job, so very well done, guys. <laughs> and that's all we've got time for today, so we hope that you've enjoyed the lesson and found it interesting, and now understand more about pie charts, how to read them correctly and get the types of information that we need. So we'll see you again soon in the next lesson. So can we turn to wave and say goodbye, guys? Bye-bye. See you again soon.